Hey, hey, hey. Oh, the devil. Oh, yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Have that, you wire yoda. Anyway, oh, have I got a treat for you today? What well, a treat for me as well. Because I've not just got one, I've got two. Yes, two, bless you. AIMA A07 Maxes. And what I want to do today is bridge those suckers. So I want to know whether buying two of them bridged will sound better than one in stereo mode. So if you bridge them in mono mode, they should sound better than in stereo mode. And you get a little bit of extra juice as well. Oof, a little bit of oof. So I want to see if they do sound any better. Um, on paper they should, because obviously when you use an amp in mono mode or bridge it in mono mode, you shouldn't have any crosstalk between the channels at all. So you should get better imaging and burial, bet, burial? what's burial? I don't know, any idea? No? <laughs> I don't know either. You should get better uh, imaging and stereo separation. So, you, cause you don't have any crosstalk between the channels. Right. In my last video where I reviewed the amp, I got it a little bit wrong. I, I was just guessing, I hadn't looked at the instructions how to uh, bridge these amps. And I got it a little bit wrong where you only use, uh, I thought you'd use both RCA inputs, but it's only the one you use when I looked at it online. So let's go and have a little look online and see how they suggest to bridge these amps. Come on, let's go. I just wanted to quickly interrupt this video because I recently received a comment uh, from this really pompous guy. <laughs> and he said this, acting like a clown seriously damages your credibility. Plus it's just annoying. Confounded face emoji. <laughs> I really don't know what he's talking about. Let's just take this off. Right. So, <laughs> every so often, I get a comment like this of really sort of uh, rigid, stoic audiophiles that hate me having a laugh and uh, just joking around. Because for some reason, the only way to get credibility seems uh, to be if you act like a uh, 1950s BBC newsreader. <laughs> I don't understand. There's so many of them around at the moment over YouTube. And I'm not that person. So you either like me or you don't. Why do they even bother to stop and make a comment? And <laughs> it's just hilarious. But I just wanted to <laughs> do that because I love taking the mick out of these people. It is quite funny to me. Anyway, on with the video. Right. Okay, here's mono mode. Now the first bit says connecting a phone, tablet, laptop, PC, DVD, MP3, TV into one amp in mono mode, go into one speaker. And it's important to remember, please switch the correct mode before connecting. So I'll show you that switch later on. There's a switch underneath the amp, but you have to switch over from stereo mode to mono mode. So it's important you switch that over when you use mono mode and this is the one I want here this one here going to two speakers now this is something you need to be aware of because you could use these in mono mode without a preamp but the problem is is that you're going to have to match the volumes on both of them all the time every time you want to turn it up you're going to have to put the volume up on both amps to the same level which is a bit of a pain in the neck so I can see why they're suggesting to use a preamp. You, you don't, I suppose you don't have to, but I would, you could just, if I was a CD player, you could run one lead there, one lead there, and just use the volume on both the amps, but it's a pain in the neck adjusting the both of them. So what it says is adjust the AO7 Max volume to the maximum output state and control the volume output through the preamplifier or decoder. Decoder could be a DAC, I suppose. I don't know what they say in there, right? Anyway, right? So you would need a preamp for the best 
possible outcome, I would imagine. But you don't have to. Now, in my last video, I was guessing and I thought you connected the spe left speaker up to here and the right speaker up to here. And you would connect one there and then one in this one here. Yoink. But actually, I can see what they mean. You just put the right channel into the left channel on the amp, that one, and the left channel onto the left channel of that one. So that'll be feeding it in mono mode, the left channel, and that'll be feeding it the right channel. And then you run your speaker wires from that mono connection here, there, into your speaker left and right. So that's how you do it. So let's get over to my hi-fi and connect it all up and show you what I've done. And then we'll do a bit of a sound test. Ooh. Okay, so I've got it set up and ready to rock and roll. Obviously, I'm going to turn it all around. I'm just doing this to show you guys what I've done. As per the instructions, I've got a Fozzy Audio P3 amplifier. And this is going to be connected into the two Aima amps. So I've got the left channel running into this one. And you put that in the left RCA of that one. And you've got the right channel running into this one and that's also going into the left RCA you got both speaker binding posts going into the top mono mode here it doesn't matter about left and right that's what I think it doesn't matter about left and right because it's mono okay and don't forget finger point right underneath here okay you need to change that over there and flick it across to mono mode now I used a safety pin just put that in because you can't get your finger in there you need something to go in there and flick that across. So they both set to mono mode. And then what I'm gonna do then, would it be easier if they were all really in the right way? I'm gonna set the volume to the center position here. Now it says the max volume output level. Now I don't think that means full whack, okay? I think it might mean, I could be wrong, and you can set it whatever volume you want. But I don't wanna go blowing up my speakers, okay? Even though these speakers are rated at 150 watt max, uh, so they should be fine. Um, I'm gonna set it to halfway on both the, on this one and that one there, okay? Uh, because I think it's the max volume you will ever listen to it. And then once you set, once you equalize the volume on both of these, okay, you can use the volume on this then to govern the volume of both these amps. So that's what I'm going to do. Anyway, let's get it all turned around, and put back to the normal position, okay? This is dusty. And uh, then do a sound test comparing mono versus stereo mode. Ooh. Okay, it's all set up and ready to go. Woohoo! <laughs> okay, what I've done, I've connected the CD player here into the input of this uh, preamp, and then the output then is going to both of these. Now you know whether you've done the right thing by clicking the button underneath the mono mode, because when you turn it on, you'll see it comes up with the mono light on this side. If it was in stereo, you'd have this lighting up here on the other side. So they're both in mono, you can see that, okay? Also bear in mind that when you get these amps, just make sure that the volume pots are at the same level, okay? Because I noticed uh, one was slightly off on the other one. So when you set these to the volume level you want on that, say I set them halfway to that dot there, and set this one halfway there, okay? They wouldn't be the same volume. So I had to take one off and put it back on again. It was only just a little bit out, but that might be enough to, you know, not have a balanced stereo output. Anyway, so there we are. So it's all set up. Let's get the CD player on and do a sound test and see what it sounds like. Ooh.
So what did you think? Ooh. Now, to be fair, on your over YouTube, you're going to pick up the tonal differences between the two, um, but it's very difficult to get a, a sense of the stereo imaging and sound stage. So I, I'll have to give you my opinion. And uh, I felt that the sound stage and imaging and stereo separation uh, was better by, by quite a bit, I thought. Um, now, what I tend to use to test my amps with is this CD. It's Pete Tong with the Heritage Orchestra. Now, for those of you who don't know Pete Tong, you're missing out. <laughs> Pete Tong's a DJ, you know, back in the day. He's still around now, um, but a decent DJ. And what he's done, he's taken some dance music and combined them with a, a classical orchestra. Uh, and it's just, oh, really good album. I really enjoy it. So, but I like to use this to test my amps and speakers, simply because um, you've got male voices, female voices, you've got orchestral instruments playing as well, uh, and pl plus you've got a nice bass line, okay? A good thumping bass. So it basically, it, it, it gives your speakers or amp, whatever you're testing, a good workout this does. So this is why I like to use this album. And when I was, uh, obviously I haven't got an amp switcher to test between the two, but it was very easy to hear the difference. On, the, on, this, on, the, on its own, the AO7 Max is very good, but together, <laughs> right? I definitely noticed a bigger sound stage. It was definitely louder, <laughs> definitely louder. Um, don't forget, when they're in mono mode, I'm getting 118 watts per channel into eight ohms. So you've got to be careful not to blow your speakers up. Uh, <laughs> and while I, and just in case I forget, so I did say to put these here, like that, like that, uh, but I found it was better to turn them to full whack. But just be aware, <laughs> okay, be careful, because it goes loud. Uh, so with this one, I was only putting it maybe, to get to 90 dB, I only had to go a third of the way up. It, it was it, it was very loud, okay? And I don't want to blow up my these speakers because they're my brothers. Sorry, bruv, <laughs> okay? Uh, so I didn't go any louder than that. Even though, that, like I said before, these can handle up to 150 watt. I still didn't want to, you know, push it too much, okay? They went very loud, <laughs> easily. And uh, also as well, this has tone controls. Um, and I didn't have to, I kept them on zero dB. There was no need for them in my opinion. Which makes me think as well, while I'm on the subject of a preamp, is that I reckon, this is my prediction. What's my prediction? Pain. <laughs> okay. I reckon that um, uh, IEMA will bring out a, uh, a preamp to go with these. I definitely think that's my prediction. It, it, it's a no-brainer, really. They got these these great amps, and they suggested you should have a preamp to go with it to, to use the volume. So they're going to bring out a preamp soon. Launch these, bring out a preamp. They everyone buys these and goes, oh, I need a preamp now. Oh, <laughs> actually, we just got one coming out. There you go. <laughs> so going back to what I thought of the sound, yeah, I thought the, the stereo separation was cleaner. Uh, I thought. Soundstage and imaging was better. Voices were bang in the middle. It was definitely improvement. So you can see that when you when you bridge an amp in mono mode, uh, if it's designed for it, it definitely makes an improvement over the soundstage and imaging and stereo separation. And I actually thought that they that it sounded even though I leveled the volumes in the sound test I did. That I got a decibel meter on my phone. That's an app I use. Uh, I thought that the two together sounded a bit punchier, a bit more oomph in it. And that could be the extra juice it's giving it. I don't know what it was. Anyway, so overall, really impressed with these amps. They're very, very good. Uh, can't wait for Fozzie to bring theirs out to see how they compare to these. And uh, that's something that, uh, you know, hopefully, maybe, you know, Fozzie, wink, wink, send me some free ones. Wink, wink. <laughs> Anyway, that's come to the end of the video. Let me know what you think in the comments section. I'll catch you.
in the next one. <laughs>